Hello, everybody. Welcome to another NTOP Live. My name is John Graham. I'm the Director of Application Engineering at Entopology. And today we're going to be talking about a beta functionality in our collaboration with Stratasys, in which we developed a fixture generator. So we'll go through the beta functionality. This will be somewhat of a tutorial as well as just exposing you to the capabilities. Most importantly on this is we want your feedback. So I'll put up an email address at the end. I'll put it on the screen, but it's Stratasys and Entopology.com. And we want your feedback on this engagement and how you think we could make things better. So let me, let me start by opening up a file. While that's loading, I'll go back to the previous screen. I want to give a shout out to this individual on GrabCAD because this is the file we're going to be using. I just did a quick search and, and found this steering column support, which I thought was very good. It was very representative of something that you may build a fixture around for two reasons. There's a lot of organic shapes to this, a lot of curvature that's not very straightforward, but there's already, there's all, there's also uh, some journals, if you will, some probably machine surfaces that are very much important. And you, maybe you need to take some measurements on these and build a fixture. So that's the model I'm going to be using for this demonstration. Uh, let's take a look and see what it looks like. So here is the file brought into Entopology. And I'm not going to go through all the details of this fixture generator, but a few things I'll say to start off. Uh, it's important right away to put this in the orientation in which I want the fixture. I really want the fixture going in this Y orientation. So I need to just swap out a couple numbers over here. This is just going to regenerate it and put it in the correct orientation. So there's the original and you'll see the reoriented pop up in a few seconds. There we go. So now the positive Z represents the direction in which I want the fixture. Now to make this a little bit easier for myself for navigating around, I'll take that block and just drag it to a different position. Uh, so it's easier for me to turn visibility on and off. Over in this uh, section of optional features, we have one called contour standoff. So remember, I might wanna do some measurements on this part and I need it to be held firmly in place so we'll go ahead and, and just let this build an initial fixture. You'll see it pop up uh, immediately when it's done. And this isn't going to be the final fixture, far, far from it, but uh, we'll kind of work in a progression. Uh, so we've oriented the part the way we want. The fixture pops up. Let's get the part off the screen. Okay, generally speaking, we're in the right direction of the fixture I want, but a lot of modifications that I need to make. I want to make all these modifications at once. I don't want the fixture to rebuild every time I make them. So there's a button up here, auto build. Let's just turn that off for a moment. And we'll go through what these things do. So let's look straight down for a moment. All right, so here's the part where I'm, I'm kind of training you how what these buttons and options do, edge to cavity margin. This represents the cushion around the perimeter, right? So how far of a distance between where the where the fixture starts and where the far edges are. 10 millimeters, that should be fine. The fixture height and depth, very much related. Well, I know, and I kind of looked at this ahead of time, and I know that I want the depth of this fixture to be, you know, from the very bottom, which is, let's move this part right about to the 100 millimeter marker on the ruler. And I want the fixture to go right around there, which I kind of looked ahead of time and noted it's about 93 millimeters is going to be my plunge depth, if you will. So we'll say that the fixture height, let's make it a little bit bigger, 115 and my fixture depth or that plunge should be 93. The clearance between the standoffs and the part we call the part clearance. We'll leave it at a millimeter for now. We'll probably change that uh, minimum pillar thickness. I'll talk about more in a moment. Fixture resolution, maybe that smallest feature size you're after a millimeter, that should be okay. Diameter of the standoffs, three. We'll make the height of those or the standoff distance five millimeters. And we're gonna let that rebuild. So it should look very different from before. You'll notice when this pops up, there's one thing missing that I didn't, uh, I did not put in there at all, and it's these standoff locations, these final points. And top with this block, with this tool that we've built, does come with a couple of points already in there. Let me explain how they work. First of all, you can see this beautiful fixture. Let's hide the part. Uh, a lot of contour and curvature in there, and. The resolution looks pretty good. I don't really need all those details, but it's really the standoffs that I'm concerned with. Um, while I'm here, I'll just mention this 
a minimum pillar thickness, you can see the very center, there's a large opening here. Um, if I had a, a value of the standoff distance that was lower, you would probably see a pillar come through here and it might look very pointy in places. But as you crank this up, this minimum pillar thickness, it's gonna knock those down, the height and the diameter, if you will. And so if I were to put a value of five, you would see, let me change the orientation a little bit, you would see this spike drop down a little bit. It's not very pronounced at the moment, but just know that if you run into that problem where there's spikes, you crank that value up appropriately and you're gonna see something that looks more like what you want. All right, so let's talk about the location of the standoffs. You'll notice there is a standoff sitting right there. Why is that? Well, I didn't tell it to put one there. Well, let's just expose the points. Um, I've got two of them at zero, zero. Here's what's happening. And it's, it's actually very slick what NTOP's doing. I have a point, zero, zero, zero. It's finding the closest location to the part, which is going to be right there. Let me draw in green. And then it's moving normal to that surface and creating a pillar, creating a standoff. So as many points as you have and wherever they're located, that's where you will have standoffs. Let's just create a random one there for a moment and we'll see what happens. I'm suspecting we'll see a second standoff uh, somewhere over there on the right. Now I realize this is potentially, you're looking at this going, well, this is a very manual operation to put these standoffs in. Well, yes and no. I think you can see that there's room for improvement already where there's some automation taking place where you could dictate where surfaces are, where you want standoffs. You know, those are things that we've thought about, but if you think are important, please let us know. We want to hear from you. All right, so let's go back in and you can see the standoffs uh, are put pretty much where you'd expect. Okay. Now I mentioned, I said yes and no when it comes to having to manually put these points in. Let me turn this auto build off because I want to use the power of this algorithmic uh, modeling, this computational modeling in NTOP and import some points. I mean, why do I have to put them in manually? And by the way, let me back up for a moment and do an undo. You could put in as many points as you want here by hitting the plus sign and putting their location, but we don't want to do things manual. We want to program it for the future for automation. Instead, what I'll do is say, let's go import some points. Okay. Now I just typed in that command, you might think, well, how do I know that's there, John? Well, of course, if you like to go use the ribbon for commands, you can do that up in the utilities tab exchange. There's an import points block. Let's go find that file. Now I have a CSV file ahead of time. Let's just open that up so you can see firsthand what it looks like. Eight rows of XYZ points, no labels, no columns, just the, the, the straight up points. And you can import those in as a CSV file. All right. So I've imported those. Let's make sure I get the units. And what's the thing I love about NTOP, the drag and drop nature. You know, I have two import blocks in here. We'll delete the one from there, drag this one in. Great. Let's take a look at those and see where they are. In fact, I'll change the color to make it a little bit more obvious what they look like or where they are. I rotate around and look, I have eight points that completely cover the journals. This is just my best guess of how I might want to fixture this properly if I wanted to completely, perfectly hold it in place. Now let's take the auto build off, let it run. And you're going to see something that looks very different from before. Um, I'll make one other change because let's say that I want uh, what you might call perfect line fit between the end faces of the standoffs and the parts. I don't want this thing to wiggle around. So maybe you want some kind of clearance in there, but just for kicks, let's put zero in so you can see exactly what that looks like. All right, so that should be done in just a second here. There it is. And let's hide the part and you've got eight beautiful standoffs that were a result of the points that I imported into NTOP. Let's go into a cross section view. I hit uh, X on the keyboard, by the way, you could always right click and find some, some shortcuts in here, such as isolate. This is only going to show you that block, or I think under view, you should see section cut. There we go. And I want my normal direction to be right there. We'll flip that, drag some arrows through. Yeah, let's put the part in there as well. And you'll see the perfect fit between the fixture and the standoffs. Uh, just to sort of recap and explain some of these numbers again, you know, we talked about 115 is my total height. 93 is, let's draw in red here. 93 is gonna be this depth, uh, the plunge depth all the way in. 
the we talked about the part clearance this is zero right now right minimum pillar thickness yeah that got knocked down because of a offset uh, fixture resolution the smallest feature it's looking for in your part the standoff diameter this is going to be right i'm sorry distance right here obviously the standoff distance let's change that to green and we'll say that distance and then finally your chamfer so if i were to zoom in and the rendering of this is not perfect i've sacrificed that a little bit to get you some speed so you're not waiting um, that's going to be that distance right there standoff chamfer if you do want a higher resolution to verify things look good you can always go to highest res and, and finally, another way to get a good resolution, too, is to drag and drop this block into the mesh fixture. And that's going to turn this into a mesh and show you something a little bit more precise of what you can expect uh, the final part to look like. Um, so that's it. Again, this covers uh, a little bit of a tutorial and explanation of these contoured standoffs and what that does and how to import points as well. So you can create your own externally bring them into NTOP. Um, but I mentioned most importantly, we want your feedback. So entopology.com strat slash stratasys is a website to go to to get a little more information to download some of the tool files, the one I showed today. But uh, send us your feedback. We want to hear it, what you like, what you don't like, how we can improve it, because this is only going to be as good as the feedback we get and the input from users. So thanks so much, everybody. We appreciate it. Have a great day.